Welcome everyone to episode one of Third Time Lucky. This is gonna be about the journey so far, so everything leading up to this prep. The story behind the name Third Time Lucky is that this is my third prep with the first two not actually making it to stage due to COVID. Both of them were because of COVID. The first one, I got eight weeks in, got in very, very good condition. Probably too conditioned too soon, but I think I was only four weeks out from the first show. That got cancelled because of the very, very first uh, strain of COVID, so the first lockdown. And then the second one, we only got four weeks into that and I pulled that one myself. Um, I just knew that the same thing was gonna happen and this time I would rather be in control, be able to pull the prep myself, put myself in a better position for maybe a later show, rather than committing to a show that I wasn't certain about, that wasn't gonna go ahead. Just even that uncertainty, not really been able to commit to that. So I knew, I wanted to pull that show, I didn't want to do it, um, and I think I made the right choice there. Obviously made the right choice because the shows didn't go ahead in the end, so very happy that I did pull that show early. Okay, right, so we're gonna start where my last YouTube finished uh, about two years ago. So I started that YouTube up because I was doing a cut, and at the time, my online coaching was starting to grow a little bit. I wanted something to show people how I approach a cut. People probably know that I enjoy flexible dieting, if it fits your macros, just enjoyable food. I'm not the, the bland, plain chicken and rice kind of guy. Well, right now I am, but before, if it was my way, I wouldn't be that person. And that's what I wanted to do with that series at the time, was to show people that you can get in shape, show people what I eat to get in shape, uh, and basically just kind of break the norm of you have to eat this like strict bodybuilding, diet associated food um, to like lean down or lose body fat and it was going to be relatable to the clients then as well because a lot of the things I was eating was going to be on their meal plan so just to show like exactly what I was eating very very similar to what they would have been eating so that's why I wanted to start and obviously just to document the prep so it was basically a six I think it was only six weeks I think maybe I planned eight but I think it was six I just wanted to do a six week cut just to see what type of condition I could get in and then if I was happy with the condition I knew I could get in I would cut it there start the gain phase and then start planning for a show the following year so we got six weeks in and I really surprised myself with the condition I was able to bring and that's when I knew I wanted to compete. I didn't know starting that cut I wanted to compete. I obviously wanted to test out and see. And once I seen how fast my body could change, that I could diet, that I would be able for a prep, uh, even though it was only six weeks. But I just knew myself that I would be able to do this because once I see results, once I see progress, that is literally all I need to keep going. That is why I just enjoy cutting and prep a lot more than say gaining phases and off seasons. You just see changes so quick. You see progress very fast. And that is like motivation to me to just keep going, keep going, keep going. No matter how hungry I am, tired I am, that will just drive me on all day to keep going. So from about June to January then, we started on our gain phase. Not the best one at all. Went from 75 kg to 84 kg and my heaviest, which, you know, wasn't like, that's not a huge amount to put on. Like I did stay lean. So the majority of that nine kg was muscle, at least I could say that. Um, but definitely not enough size to be, say, competitive on a bigger stage, looking back at it. So the plan was to prep for Spring Classic in April 2020. I was starting my prep January 20th. So I think from about the middle of December up until then, uh, January 20th, probably five, five or six weeks in between then, was literally just wasted. Um, and I lost a lot of weight as well. There was lots happening. We had a staff party with Goldstone. There was obviously Christmas, Christmas Eve, Stephen's Day, New Year's, uh, and then my birthday was January 20th. So that was the whole reason of starting the prep. January 20th, everyone used to do, I think January 1st for spring shows. I was like, having my birthday, man. <laughs> we went up to the sea field, had a great time, had a blowout in Mad Egg and also uh, five guys before we started, because you have to get that last meal in, of course. But I ended up dropping from 84 to 80 kg, so it was very, very small starting off. Um, this was the starting point for prep numero uno. 
So we started at about 80 kg. So January 20th, we started the prep. It was 12 weeks out from a f the first show and 14 weeks out from the Spring Classic. The first show, I can't even remember the name of the Federation right now, but it was basically basically like a smaller Mickey Mouse kind of a show. It was just something I wanted to do to get on stage, you know, just try my hand on stage into an easy category, which wouldn't be the mindset I'd have now, but at the time I was like, oh, I'll get on stage and just, you know, go home with a gold medal and I feel good about myself. Whereas like, if you're standing up against, you know, people who aren't up to a high standard, you know, how good can you feel about yourself really bringing home a gold, gold medal from that show? But that was the plan anyway. So we got eight weeks in before the first lockdown happened, uh, which was devastating. I did make a lot of progress. I was getting very, very lean and I was only four weeks out from that first show. And um, so we were very, very close to the end product and I would have been really excited to see where that would have ended up, whether I would have kind of grown a little more into the show and got leaner or just kind of kept getting leaner, lo losing size and having like a stringy look. I don't know what way it would have went, more than likely on the stringier side. Uh, but again, we'll never know. I am glad that that first lockdown did happen and I didn't get on stage and because obviously it's led up to this point now where I have a lot more size and a much higher chance of winning at a higher show. So when I found out the shows were cancelled, I think one of the federations texted me. It was really surreal. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but I didn't care. At the time, I was so food focused, like very, very food focused. All I could think about was like burgers, mad eggs, Chinese, KFC, just weird things I'd never really crave. But you know, I could just get like a smell of a takeaway and it would just like set me off and like I would feel so, I don't know, just like I'm sick of this prep, I don't wanna do it anymore. I just wanted food more than I wanted to prep at the time. So yeah, when I got the text, I didn't even care about the prep. I was actually happy, I was like buzzing. I'm gonna to go to Tesco now, that's exactly what I did. Me and Kelly went straight to Tesco and like i just bought a load of shit i would never buy before and um, like all the cookies muffins donuts into the little sweets aisle getting all those little pouches those two three for two or whatever load of jellies just anything i could get my hands on went home and i was just having a little bit of everything and for like the first three days it was great because you know all the carbs going in all the sugar salt I was just had these massive pumps training. I was like, oh my God, I'm so full. This is great. I look amazing. Uh, and I think that's probably when I got one of those photos as well. But then I think after the three day mark, I was literally just watching my physique go downwards, just slowly getting softer, flatter, size going. And it was very, very hard to watch, but I just wasn't in a mindset to do anything about it. And that to me was a place that I would never have been before. I have always been very, very motivated about training, eating, and just like not letting my physique get like that. And just looking at it, it was like one of the worst places I ever had been. And um, just because like it was so soft, flat, and like no muscle. It, it basically, I felt like I was just a beginner again. But I couldn't do anything about it. Like in my head, I just felt absolutely stuck. So that went on for about three months, just between the combination of lockdown, uh, just being annoyed at myself that the shows didn't go ahead. I told myself, you know, I'm not gonna compete again. I don't care about competing. I just wanna eat food. Uh, that was short lived. Uh, once I see my physique just go to absolute shit. So three months in, I kind of had enough of it. It was the first time I couldn't kind of pull myself or motivate myself to do something. And that is when I reached out and got my first coaches. So up until this point, I think I'm training six or seven years at this point. I had done everything myself. You know, a lot of people had coaches at the time. It was becoming more popular. Um, and I was kind of looking around to see, you know, who can I get? And there was a few lads around Waterford who had these coaches. So I reached out to them, got on board with them. Uh, that was about June or July time, 2020. And I basically said, look, I don't know if I want to compete again. Um, I just, you know, I need to get back on track. They pr pretty much just said, don't worry, like don't start training to compete, just go get back training because you enjoy it. You know, and that to me, it was a lot of relief gone off me. Um, and I just literally got back training. I was eating meals, you know, I would never make myself, but it was nice just, you know, follow instructions um, and get back, get back to a plan. I see my physique change very fast again, which is so nice after just being in this like limbo for three months of this like soft, skinny dad bod look. So physique was changing very, very fast. And after a few weeks, I was like, okay, 
I do want to compete again. You know, I could see the changes happening and I was kind of getting that fire, that motivation, that passion uh, and decided I want to compete. So we were looking at the spring shows then the following year. So spring 2021. Had a very, very good gaining phase. Got up to 88 and a half kg, something around there. Finished the gaining phase in December and went into our prep. So leading into that prep, I had actually tore my MCL. So the side of my knee, the ligament there. Uh, that happened, I think, on a leg press. I think because I, I really don't know. I just woke up the next day, my knee was locked. Um, and that went on for a very, very long time. I think it was October to February before it was, you know, you're able to train legs again. So a long time without training legs. And for the first couple of months, I could barely walk. Uh, so, you know, cardio and steps became uh, a chore to say the least, it was painful. But I told him, you know, look, I want to do this prep. I, I have to do it after the last one not happening. I like I owe myself this, I have to do it. So I was pushing on, even though it was kind of stupid, I shouldn't have. It was something I wanted to do. So we started that in December. Um, I was just really happy because I'd put on a lot more size compared to the previous prep. So I knew, right, there's more muscle there. Once I bring that condition, you know, it'll look brilliant on stage. We only got four weeks in, so December to January. And then we were hit with lockdown number three. So the longest one that we're only kind of after coming out of. And I basically said, I don't like I'm not going to prep I'm not continuing prep I'm pulling this one myself at the four week mark because I'm not letting what happened last time happen this time last time I committed to the prep I became emotionally attached where you know I, I don't care if anyone's telling me the shows are being cancelled I'm doing this I don't care it's not gonna you know it's not gonna be cancelled even though everything is you know saying it is so I wanted to be able to take control this time and pull it myself and um, just being a bit more rational being able to say yeah look I'll pull it I'm not having it pulled from me, I'm taking control uh, and I'm very, very glad I did. Um, they were kind of pushing me to, you know, keep going, you know, this is a bad mindset, keep going, keep pushing for the show and um, if the show doesn't go ahead, you can do a photo shoot and, you know, you'll be in a leaner position then and we can push on then for, you know, shows in the future. But at the time, I also wanted a break from coaching. So I was like, look, I just need to take a step back for myself. I've been, felt like I've been coached for ages. Um, and I just needed a bit of a breather to decide what I was going to do again. This is the second prep that's after been pulled now. Even though I put it myself, it's still really fucking annoying. That I had put everything into the first prep, you know, kind of spiraled downwards, got myself back on track. Like I'd been bossing my balls um, to put on the extra bit of size and get myself kind of up to a higher standard for the second prep and then four weeks in for it to be pulled i was like i was cracking again i was definitely a lot angrier this time compared to the first time where it felt like relief because i just wanted to eat food this time i was just annoyed and angry and was like like how often is this going to happen like can i put myself through a third prep i honestly didn't know if i had the head to just keep doing this you know this constant gain and cutting gain and cutting and then just not knowing if you're going to go into a, a prep because you really have to get like like emotionally geared up for it as well like you have to be hyped up you have to really want it and be committed and fully in like if you're not all in it's just i just don't think there's any point in doing it so i wasn't at all i was not fully in this and um, so pull that said look I don't want to be coached anymore. I need to take a step back. I need to just decide what I'm going to do for the future. If I want to go to prep again, if I just want to relax and take a step back. So that's what I did there. So I've been talking to Ryan and Dave, um, as everyone will know, are my coaches at the moment. Uh, I was lucky enough that I was kind of in contact with them uh, in person a week or two before the lockdown had happened. They were in Goldstone training a bit when I was around or working. and um, So I was just kind of chatting a bit back and forth about prep and how it's going and all that. And um, told them then, you know, I'd finished up with my coaches, not sure what I'm going to do, if I'm going to prep again, really annoyed over, you know, lockdown and a second prep, feeling like it had gone to waste. So we kind of got talking uh, and they were saying, you know, like, why don't you come on board with us? You know, it'll be really good. It'll be like the three of us. There was this whole kind of strictness um, of having a coach, I think, that I felt a little restricted. Um, that was kind of putting like a lot of pressure on me as well. So I kind of felt, you know, jumping on with Ryan and Dave would be a really, really good show. Just being friends with them. I just felt it'd be a lot easier to communicate things and also to give my input on things as well. So anyway, after chatting with them quite a bit back and forth, uh, met up and kind of just discussed, you know, going for what I was going to do. 
and talked about you know jumping on board with them how that would run uh, and the idea of it just like it really really appealed to me um the way they were even wired and everything phrase and everything i was like yeah do you know what this sounds brilliant there was a couple of reasons why i thought you know level up would be a good shout for me one of them was actually the podcast i remember going out doing steps listening to their podcast and just thinking fuck these guys are really really smart um like i would like to be coached or be under them just to you know absorb some of that knowledge like a little sponge <laughs> so that was definitely one of the, the driving factors was listening to that podcast so we started up with level up coaching in january so operation stop being a skinny fuck <laughs> commenced we got that well underway and um, it was all done over lockdown but to see the progress we made in lockdown was just amazing we went from I think I started at 86 and a half with them and got up to 94.2, which that way for me is is nuts to even think about. Um, I'll put up a picture of the 94.2 here. It's a very, very soft 94.2, uh, but nonetheless, it put on the size needed and especially improved a lot of the weaker areas. So one of the strong areas I have is my back. Um, it just you know seems to grow, respond very, very well. And I think my Latin insertions are pretty good. So it just gives me a wider look. But for men's physique, you know, we really need to improve the, the top line, top shelf. Um, medial delts is something that, like I just didn't have. They were just flat. So we focus a lot on shoulders and on arms as well. So now the physique just looks like completely different. It seems like it's more of a complete package now after improving those weak areas and still obviously working on them. So the training over lockdown was completely stripped back. You know, it was handy to do it over lockdown because I didn't have the machines I was using before. So I wasn't going in with, oh, I used to lift this. Let me lift it now. You know, it was all free weight stuff. So you know i didn't really do free weight work in the gym it was all machine work so i kind of had to start from scratch anyway so it was a very good time to strip things back and um, so the ego didn't take too much of a hit there but just how we trained was completely different like it was really a lot of tempo work you know two second squeezes on something two second pauses here and there four second eccentrics just paying attention to every exercise working it and understanding the exercise more you know are we working this in the lengthened range are we working this in the the shortened range just small things like that and even with the pressing i used to struggle with pressing and um, i'd always get a pain in my left shoulder and it was obviously just due to the grip and my elbows being flared out quite a bit so i'd be sending train footage back and forth to the lads they would break down absolutely everything it can get annoying at times but it like the benefit you get is, is so so worth it and also the food was huge as well so we went on to a meal plan which i wasn't really used to um my last coaches i did have a meal plan but for the majority of the off season um i swapped onto the if it fits your macros so i was literally just doing the macros this time it was literally the meal plan eat eat what's on it and that's it there was room for flexibility um being in a gain phase i think saturday i would have an off plan meal uh and then if i wanted to swap out a meal it would just be like substitute one on the plan put in your own meal kind of a thing uh, but i really didn't use that that often there was the odd subway and ramen went in there and um, but i think that was literally it i just stuck to what was there and really really learned about my digestion and what like works well for me <laughs> there was a lot of rice consumed but it just goes to show like how much more i was able to eat and to digest and just utilize a lot more rather than eating like unnecessary calories that you're just not using that was like how i was before it's just thinking about the calories just literally just calories 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 i'd be eating 5,000 calories and be like why aren't i growing that much whereas i'm seeing people bigger than me eating less and it just didn't make sense but now it does i just was not digesting and utilizing that food whereas now i was i was eating less food this off season than i had before and managed to get to my biggest so you know go figure that one out it's literally down to the Duh, 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 duh. it's literally down to the digestion and that's it the off season will level up you know i really cannot say enough there and um, it was huge all that was happening was i was literally just growing in confidence week to week yeah really really couldn't have asked for more and just knowing that that progress was made in lockdown all i kept thinking was what kind of progress are we going to make when we get into the gym so let's lead up to this prep so third time lucky this is my third time prepping and this time we are making it to the stage so we started at 21 weeks out 
normally if someone had told me you're prepping from 21 weeks i would have been like fuck no i am absolutely not there's no way i will last 21 weeks um like i love prepping but i just feel like i'll break or i'll want something or i'll binge or you know just crave food i'll be like oh 16 weeks is my max absolute max when i heard you know we're prepping I was buzzing, I couldn't wait. There was no difference between prepping and the off season because my mentality had completely changed. How I was eating was just so different. I was just so focused. It was literally like food is fuel kind of a thing. And I didn't really crave much at all. So when prep came around, I was happy because food was obviously being pushed. I was feeling, you know, sluggish, carrying around 94.2 kg, which I would not be used to at all. And obviously getting a bit soft. So it was a really, really good time to start it. So I'm not sure when it was, I feel like may start of may yeah i think it was so i think it was like the first week of may at 21 weeks out started there and literally the only change we made was the granola in my last meal came out uh we added in almond butter instead and i was doing i think 20 minutes cardio for the first two weeks and then it went up to 30 minutes that was literally it and it stayed like that up until 13 weeks out so we got eight weeks out of one change from the off season which is absolutely nuts like the food is still so high to me i haven't been hungry until the 12th um the 12 week out mark so right now as of today we're 12 weeks out uh, but just going up till we'll say last week it was eight weeks in had not been hungry i was making huge progress every week i got that initial like shitty weight off that big drops that were coming and now the weight is stabilizing we're either seeing smaller drops or the weight staying in around the same and the body just recombining itself obviously just being back to the gym uh, and just getting some fullness back there so yeah just to see minimal changes and huge huge progress happening is very very exciting because we are now 12 weeks out and there's so much left we can do you know with food and cardio the cardio has pretty much been 30 minutes the whole way bar those first two weeks so it's literally just become routine very very easy so that's pretty much where we are now i will show you this so this is pretty much where we are now at 12 weeks no yeah fuck 12 weeks out that is not 12 weeks is not a long time at all that is absolutely going to fly by and it's just been so handy that those first nine weeks have been very very easy it's felt like we've been cruising but the hammer has dropped now and it's really time to push things on. I've noticed in the last week, you know, how much my physique has changed already. And I feel like it's literally just going to go like this for the next 12 weeks where it's going to morph every single week. Um, and I couldn't be more excited for it. Okay, I, I think that is it. I've um, been yapping on quite a bit. I'm going to have to throw all that together and hopefully we get a video out of it. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it there. I think that is pretty much it, you know. All I can say is this is the third time prepping. It is third time lucky, you know, something good is going to come of this. Even though the first two preps not going ahead was very, very annoying and very frustrating. Looking back, I am so glad neither of them went ahead because I'm in such a better position now. You know, if the first two had went ahead, I probably wouldn't have signed up with the lads. Probably wouldn't have made the progress that I've made right now um so everything for a reason so those first two shows didn't happen for a reason and um, it's good good reason it didn't happen because i didn't get get on stage with a substandard or subpar physique whereas now i feel like like i'm very very proud of the physique i'm after achieving since you know we prepped for that first show a lot of sizes went on and now i feel very confident i feel like i'm going to be very competitive we are 12 weeks out from pca ireland so that is going to be the first show and 13 weeks out from the arnold classic so even going over to the arnold classic it is now it's a beginners category i'm in so almost like a first timer show and um, i still feel like i'm going to be competitive there i'm not going to say you know i'm going to be first or whatever because you just you don't know who's going to show up at either of the shows and um, but i'm going there very confident that i'm going to bring something that i think no one else will I just feel like I have a good shape, good men's physique look, and I just do not see anyone beating my condition. Um, not to sound big headed or anything like that, but I've seen what I've done from that first prep um, and being able to do that this time with longer time, more size on, I just know it, it's gonna look nuts and I'm, I'm absolutely here for it and I cannot wait to see it. And I can't wait for obviously everyone now to be able to see it and get a closer look from behind the scenes with the camera. Thank you for anyone who sat down and watched this far. Um, it's yapping quite a bit, but obviously there has a lot has happened with those first two preps and leading up to this third show. 
So like I said, this is it. It's third time lucky. It's do or die. We're going for gold. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the intro. Obviously not too much happened. It's just a sit down chat just to bring everyone up to speed. Second video is going to be a push day. And then obviously I'm going to try to get as many videos out as possible. Bring you through as much of this prep as I can. Give you a close look at, you know, the training, the food, just day in the life. Anything that happens on prep that is going to be of interest uh, or just give anyone a better insight or better look, I'm going to try vlog. Um, I've really, really enjoyed vlogging or whatever, recording since getting this camera. It's been a lot more enjoyable definitely since the first time I tried my hand at YouTube. Um, so I know I'm going to be bringing this thing with, my, with me everywhere and yeah, just trying to get as much footage as possible. So that is it. I'm going to wrap it up there again. Thank you so much for watching if you have made it this far uh, and stay tuned. This is going to be the start of something special.